Hey YouTube, this is Drew Haddon Tech here to go over 10 myths about Linux you should stop believing right now. So there are a lot of myths about why you shouldn't use Linux going around the internet that just scare away new users. And I just want to debunk them. So now you may be upset with all of these complete lies and half-truths about why you shouldn't use Linux that either simply aren't true or may have been true back in the day but are no longer true. So I'm going to go over those. All right. Number 10, Linux is only for servers. The thing is, Linux was not only developed to be a server OS, but also a regular operating system for your PC. Like heck, Android is technically a Linux distribution, and it also powers a lot of IoT devices. So yeah, again, it wasn't just developed for servers. It was also developed for other things as well, including just to be a regular operating system for your PC. Linux is that versatile. All right, number nine, Linux is hard to install. Okay, this may have been true back in Linux's early days, and this is still technically true with some more advanced user-oriented Linux distributions like Arch. But these days, if you install a distribution like Ubuntu, Linux, elementary OS, pretty much like any beginner-friendly distro. Oh, it's actually easier than doing a Windows install. It's so easy that I think I can get my mom to install Linux. Oh wait, I have. <laughs> I encourage you to go check out that video. I'll link it up in the card. All right, number eight. Linux is hard to use. Okay, another thing that may have been true back in Linux's early days, but these days it's like saying Windows or Mac OS is hard to use. Like, every operating system has some sort of a learning curve. Like, when you install anything, you're learning something new. Same with Linux. And if you know Windows or Mac OS, you'll probably get settled into the Linux desktop in like five minutes. Number seven, you need to know commands to use Linux. Okay, that ties in with Linux is hard to use. Another thing that may have been true back in Linux's early days, but these days, it's just a simple lie. It's just a simple lie. Like most Linux distributions, especially the beginner friendly ones, come with graphical user interfaces that you'll, again, probably find your way around sooner rather than later. It's kind of like saying that you need to know commands to use Windows or Mac OS, which yeah, at one point you needed to know commands in order to use a computer at all. But nowadays, obviously, that's no longer true. Pretty much the same with Linux. Now sure, there are some circumstances where you need to open up terminal and type some commands in, but in those cases, fret not, you can simply copy and paste. If it's commands from documentation of reputable piece of software, there's little to no harm in it, even if you don't understand what's happening. All right, number six, there's no support on Linux. Another thing that's just a simple lie that may have been true back in the early days of Linux, but is no longer true. If you're having a problem with your computer, you can just look up a solution. That works no matter what operating system you're on. That's what the internet is for. Oh, and don't get me started with the fact that you can't get telephone support on Linux. Because how many regular users are gonna actually call up support and wait for like five minutes on hold? Nobody does that these days. Most people don't have enough patience for that. Like, only the enterprises do that. And if an enterprise does need something like that, they can get Ubuntu Advantage, or even go with a distribution like Red Hat, which both have paid subscription models. Saying there's no support on Linux, that's just what proprietary software corporations like Microsoft and Apple want you to think. And they want you to think that, so you'll be scared to switch to Linux, and then you'll stay with their platform, so then they can make money. I just wanna tell you the truth about Linux support that big corporations don't want you to know. Linux is a community. There's plenty of places on the internet to ask for help. All right, number five. Linux is buggy. What? Have you not used Windows? Do you understand how buggy and how just horrible Windows is? I could probably rant for like 10 minutes on how bad Windows is. Oh wait, I have. <laughs> I encourage you to go check out that video. 
I'll link it up in the card. That video was like 11 minutes long. And that's without me ranting for another 20 minutes. Like, have you heard about the Windows 1809 bug that deleted people's files? Like, I could probably spend like two minutes talking about Linux bugs. And those Linux bugs are pretty small. Any piece of software has bugs. So I understand the other Linux myths out there, but saying Linux is buggy, oh, you're really nitpicking on this one. All right. Number four, Linux isn't secure because it's open source. Now I understand your argument that like, hackers can see the source code and find vulnerabilities pretty easily. Well, guess what? The good people are also in there finding and reporting these bugs so that way they can be patched quickly. Like even if a bad guy does find a bug, they can use it for like a week and then it's gone. These open source projects, especially like the large ones, are pretty well monitored for bugs, especially security bugs. You know, like Linux runs a lot of the internet. It even powers like Google, Amazon, other big names. So it's actually more worth it for hackers to go target Linux. How do you explain that we haven't heard about like a lot of major hacks into major company servers? Yeah, of course, security vulnerabilities do exist but they're patched pretty quickly. This is why you stay on top of your updates. With a proprietary software like Windows, you're dependent on the vendor to patch these bugs. With open source software like Linux, there's more eyes on the source code. It's like, do you understand how insecure Windows is? Okay, number three, can't stream Netflix on Linux. Okay, this may have been true like five or 10 years ago, but these days, it's just a simple lie. It's just a simple lie. Just fire up Google Chrome, Firefox or Opera, then go to Netflix.com. Pretty much have the same experience as you would in the native Netflix app. Now sure, there's no Netflix app for Linux, so you can't download anything from Netflix on Linux, but streaming, oh yeah, that's totally doable. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not. Netflix even says that on their system requirements page. All right, number two, Linux is not compatible with anything. Okay. Another myth that may have been true like five or 10 years ago. These days, there are like a lot of Linux apps. So you could probably find alternatives for your applications that you're using on Windows. Like Photoshop, there's GIMP or Krita. Premiere Pro, there's Kden Live, DaVinci Resolve, or Flowblade. There's a lot of Linux alternative apps. On Linux, you almost always have a choice. Like yeah, you could pretty easily find software for Linux. Just go into the package manager. Also, one more thing about compatibility with Linux. Like Linux supports all the standardized hardware. Graphics cards, Wi-Fi cards, whatever. Like specialized hardware, okay, that's still a problem. But any standardized piece of hardware should work just fine. Except for the very few really proprietary ones. But you may just need to do a simple Linux kernel update. I made a video showing you how to do that. I'll link it up in the card. All right. Number one, Linux is not for gamers. Okay, this is closely related with Linux is not compatible with anything. It's another myth that may have been true like five or 10 years ago, just no longer true, especially now with all the work on Linux gaming. Like there's huge companies backing it, like Valve, AMD, NVIDIA. 2019 was a big year for Linux gaming. And like one big problem is the anti-cheat system and some mainstream games not working with Linux, but that is being worked on. And you can just install Steam on Linux. Like there's a lot of games that'll work on Linux. And if you come across a Windows only game, you could probably just use Proton at your own risk. Like I haven't tried it, so I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, Linux gaming just keeps getting better and better. All right, and for sticking around to the end, I wanna give you a little bonus. Now, what big reason to use Linux is privacy, but that's not the important part. The important part is that I see a few people on the internet saying privacy doesn't matter. Just a simple lie. Like, you have the right to privacy. You should value it. In this day and age, we all have something to hide. Even if you don't think you have something to hide, you do. So no, don't listen to those people saying that privacy doesn't matter. It's just a simple lie. But anyway, those are 10 myths about Linux you should stop leaving right now. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it cleared up confusion, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.